Welcome to the Art Lady channel. Today we are going to be creating a picture in the likeness of Chief White Cloud. And this is a painting done by George Catlin in the 1800s of the chief of the Iowa tribe, Chief White Cloud. George Catlin was an artist who painted during the 1800s and he came across White Cloud when he visited Iowa and he was with a group of men who were part of the fur trade company. So he would tag along with the fur trade company and as he came across uh, Native Americans, he would portray them in portraits and in paintings. George Catlin was one of the most celebrated painters of Native American peoples. He had a um, gallery and a showing in Europe and he invited Chief Whitecloth, who is represented here, and a group of other Native Americans to Europe with him as part of the gallery tour. When Ch Chief Whitecloth returned to the United States after his gallery tour, he was a celebrated Native American who raised funds for his Iowa tribe. Today, the Iowa tribe lives in Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska. And there are over 2,258 Native American peoples of the Iowa tribe. Today, 1,451 are full-blooded Iowa. Today, we're going to be drawing a Native American Indian chief. And he lived during the 1800s. That was almost 200 years ago. So a long time ago he lived. Chief White Cloud helped lead his people to a new land. He also fought bravely for his people, his Native American people, his tribe, and he helped raise money for the tribe. Today, we're going to draw a picture of Chief White Cloud. We're gonna make it very simple for young artists. Today, I have with me artists that are five years old, but this lesson would be even simple enough for four-year-olds. So four, five, or six-year-olds. This is done by a six-year-old right here. And this is their representations of Chief White Cloud. They still need a little bit of coloring, but this was after one day of work. And this was age six years old. And I'll show you more examples in the, in the end of the video if you'd like to see more examples. To start off Chief White Cloud, we're going to take the bottom of our page right here and we're going to fold it up to the very top. Match the sides together and the top and I'm just going to press right in the middle. Then I'm going to open it back up. So we start off at the center and we go down just a little bit and we draw a horizontal line and the line is a little bit wider than our actual finger. You can see on both sides, I can see a little bit of the line, not a lot. So measure to see if it's correct. I'm gonna remove my finger now and in the front of this line, I am gonna draw above it the letter C and connect it to the line. So now I have a letter C and a horizontal line. The next step, I'm gonna go around and up. See how I went around and up? And now I'm gonna go above the line and watch how I do this, it's gonna be diagonal. So I'm gonna go above diagonal. 
This is going to form a nose of chief white cloud. Check to make sure it's above the line. Now we're going to go horizontally. We're going to go horizontally over to the right. And over to the right left and over to the left. Notice I skipped a little space. Horizontal, horizontal. Now, if we look at Chief White Claw, his shape of his eyes, we can see the center is darker. So we're gonna start with the, the iris and pupil. So I'm gonna jump, see the middle of this line, jump down and do a circle. It should be as big as your pinky fingernail. Look at when I put my finger down. And I jump over to this side and I'm gonna do the same on this side. Circle. Two circles. Now I'm gonna to touch the circle and go down. Touch the circle, go down. Touch the top of the circle, go down. Top of the circle, go down. We're making the eyelids of chief white cloud. Now I'm doing a line underneath, line underneath. And then we can connect the edges. I'm going to color in a circle inside. Inside the circle, I'm making another circle. Those are the pupils of Chief White Cloud's eyes. Pupils are the black dots in the middle of your eye. Let's go under the nose. I'm going to the middle of the nose, jump down just a little bit. I'm gonna do a diagonal line to the left, real small. I go to the left, and a diagonal line to the right. Real small. Now we have one lip, an upper lip, and you have one lower lip. Let's make Chief White Claw's upper lip. Under this line, we're gonna go straight. That's horizontal. We need to make it bigger than his nose. See how wide his nose is? So bring it over a little bit more, bigger than his nose. Make sure it's wider than his nose. And now I'm gonna go below it again. I'm gonna do a, just skip a little space and put a straight line. This is gonna be the lower lip. This is not as long as the upper lip. Curve around and bring it up. Curve around and bring it up. Notice it doesn't touch the upper lip. Now we're gonna skip a little bit of a space. Come down and do a straight line. We're gonna do a number one right here. This is his eyebrow. Skip a little space and do a number one. And on this side, do a number one. Number one, number one, and then we have a chin line. Now we're gonna connect it all together. Watch how I connect it slowly together. Coming over and down, go slow to meet the chin. Now you do. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Slowly down, around, connect to the chin.
Now, below this, I'm gonna put a number one on the side here. See how this is the side of his face? I'm gonna go number one, go to the other side, number one. Go below the chin, jump down, do a line that's horizontal, jump down again, horizontal. And I'm gonna do a giant letter C to connect it. Curve, connect. And I'm gonna do the similar curve, but opposite on the other side. Curve, connect. Now from here, I'm gonna make circles the size of my pinky fingernail. I'm gonna put a circle on this side, a circle on this side. This is a decoration that Chief White Cloud wore around his neck. These are the beads that are on the necklace that hold the decoration. Circle again, circle again. I'm gonna make circles until I reach this line here. Circle, 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 circle. Now I'm gonna come up above. We're gonna make the headdress that he wears. I'm gonna do a num big number one, big number one. I'm gonna go, watch me first. I'm gonna connect the two lines together, but watch what I'm gonna do, it's something different. I'm gonna go up and around and then back down. It's kind of like a rain, it's an arch, almost like a rainbow arch. Watch, I come curve up, over, curve back down. I'm gonna go to the bottom of my number one. I'm gonna do the same curve, up and then back down. This is a headband that's gonna hold the decorations of his headdress. We're gonna do now a row of circles. And these were beads that were on the decorations of the headdress. The circles again are gonna be as the size of my pinky fingernail. Nice big circles. Go slow and careful. You don't want them really big, but you want them to be neat. When artists add details, they do them neatly. It adds more interest to their picture. Now we're gonna add feathers. Chief White Cloud had two large feathers. We're gonna take a bead in the front and do a straight line right to the corner of our page. Then we're gonna come from the top of the feather down slightly, down slightly on the other side. Then we're gonna curve it slightly out and then back to the front line, the bottom line. It's curving out and then back in. It's tapered, it goes from skinny to thicker and then back to skinny. It almost looks like a leaf. Now artists add detail in the feather. So we're gonna go diagonally up, diagonally up on this side, diagonally up. Now 
Now we're going to put another feather. Come from the next bead, go up to the edge of the page. We're going to do it again, tapering it. Skinny then out, skinny, that's close to the edge, out, then back in, back in. Then we're going to do diagonal lines down. If we look closely at the painting by George Catlin, we can see that he has these spiky things coming out from the top. Pointy, very sharp. And people believe that they were porcupine quills. That means the kind of the needles on the back of a porcupine. They're very pointy and spiky. We can draw them very skinny. Let's first come out on this side. We're going to come up and out quick. It's slightly curved. As long as you can make it. Now these were very, very sharp and very skinny like needles. So now we're going to make it go back in, but we're being very careful and going close, close, close to the original line. Slowly right back down. So there's one porcupine quill. Now we've got a lot more to draw, but these details are going to really help our picture. Come back out again, curve out quick. Then come back slowly, really skinny, right back. Let's put one down here. Let's get smaller though, curve it out. Go back in really skinny. He had lots of these. Curve it back out, right back skinny. This one's going to curve down, right back skinny. Mine was a little bit thick here. It's okay. It's okay if we make some mistakes. Let's put another one behind the feathers. Let's put another small one out from the feathers. Really skinny and really small. We're going to put lots of them in right here. Curve it out, right back to the head. Curve it out, right back to the head. Up, right back to the head. You can always do this after, too, if you run out of time here or are not as fast as I am. I'm overlapping and putting some behind. Now I'm curving some this way. You can always come back and add more porcupine quills after we finish our picture. And when you feel that you have an, enough and it looks pretty full, you can stop. If you have not finished yet, you can go back to this later. But I want you to stop making your quills now and let's do part of his ear. On this side, we're gonna come up, right? Put your finger on the side of your face, right next to the eye. Just trace around your finger with your pen. Chief White Cloud had a really beautiful ear decoration. Put a circle here. It was made of lots of beautiful beads. Come down and up. I went way down like a really skinny long U. Starting from the circle, do it again. Down and up. The ear decoration was made with lots of circles, lots of beads. So now I'm gonna fill in with lots of circles.
when he was getting ready for this portrait, his portrait to be painted by George Catlin, he put on all of his fancy, finest things. Do it again, down and back up. And then I'm gonna come down and around again. And I'm gonna put some, just some line patterns in here that are slightly curved to show these are bead. We can do one on this side if you want to. You're gonna put one on a circle, down and back up. And I'm filling it in with circles. Down and back up. Now we're gonna come to the bottom. And if you haven't finished your ear decorations or earrings, you can go and do that after. But right now I want everybody to stop and come on down with me. And we're gonna do the last part is his bear claw necklace. So we're gonna come around here and I'm gonna put a line, actually we can just do circle. A circle directly underneath this decoration. This is actually called a pendant. It's a decoration on a necklace. And I'm gonna take and I'm gonna go up and around up and around to this side. I'm going very close to these necklaces, to these beads here. I can even make a smaller bead right here coming around. Now to make the bear claw, we start off with a circle. And then above that, we skip it skip a space. I'm going to come up and down. It's going to be quite a large bear claw. The bear claw has a tapered line as well. It goes from very very pointy because the tip of because the tip of the claw the tip of the bear claw is very sharp. So we go very pointy, so come real skinny skinny skinny. And then we get thicker. Curve around and stop. So from the for the bear claw, come out from the necklace and down. It's a curved line. It's very skinny on the end and then gets thicker as it comes to the necklace. Do another circle and this forms a pattern. The pattern we're making today is bear claw, circle, bear claw, circle, curve down, bear claw, bring it back. And what comes next in my pattern? Good. Then we've got a bear claw, curve down, circle. Now when we come to the other side, I'm curving it this way. Bear claw, circle, curve, pointy, curve, bear claw, circle, bear claw, nice big one, circle. Now, when it comes near his face, the bear claws are going to get a little bit smaller. They're behind. They're farther back. The ones on the side here are really big. I'm going to do a circle because that's part of my pattern. Bear claw. And then I'll end with a circle. Here's a close-up of the painting that George Catlin created of Chief White Cloud. And if we look closely, it looks as though Chief White Cloud has a handprint on his face in green. There's 
four stripes on one side and it looks as though there's a little bit of a stripe on the other side. Today we're going to be doing four stripes on each side. As an artist we're improvising and creating our own design. But it's up to you if you want to do just the handprint or do all the stripes on both sides. Now we're going to make uh, the lines on his face like George Catlin did in the painting by Chief White Cloud. So we're starting at the we're starting at the edge of his face up near the ear and we're going to come down toward the nose. Slight curve and I'm going to make this line kind of thick. So you just make it a little bit thicker than a skinny line. And in George Catlin's painting, he did four of these lines. In this space from here to the bottom of his mouth, we're gonna do four lines. See how I come slightly down at a curve? So I have one at the top, one near the bottom of his face. Now I've gotta put two more in the space here. One and two. So we have four lines of face paint on the chief. And we're gonna do the same on the other side. So I come near the ear and I go to near the nose. I don't touch the nose. And in George Catlin's painting, we don't see a lot of this side of his face. But for today's portrait, we did just the front view. So we're going to improvise. Do a little line down at the bottom here now. And then we've got two in the middle. Curve it near the center here. And if you go lightly at first, and then just make it a little bit darker. So I have four separate lines. Now, we're going to look at George Catlin's picture, painting. So if you want to put pause. And we're going to color in the picture matching the colors. I think it was a sheep hide he had here. So since we're doing um, peach paper, the white crayon will show up really nicely on the peach. So we're just gonna take our time now and match the painting by George Catlin. And I'll show you what my five-year-olds did today, because I have kindergartners here today. 